Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. It is a, it is a very good morning. It's a special morning. It's Chad's birthday. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, guys aren't Happy really big. Happy birthday no. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to my hubby. Happy birthday to you. I received that. And if you all have ever felt that awkwardness when people sing happy birthday to you, like at a restaurant in public, and you just sit there not knowing what to do, it was especially awkward knowing that there's a camera on us. <laughs> this will be posted on YouTube, so I'm sure our editor will make it especially awkward for us. But anyways, my hurt from um, smiling. Yeah, I'm very excited for my birthday. Thanks for being here with us on this journey, y'all. Mm-hmm. We are picking up with day three of our The Art of Overcoming devotional in the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is John chapter 11, verses 40 through 44. And they say this, Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, Thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. The devotional is titled, Sorrow is Holy Ground. It says this, Any parent will tell you that it's heartbreaking to listen to the cries of your child. Parents are hardwired to take care of their kids. Their pain awakens compassion, even if their pain is just a stubborn refusal to close their eyes and go to sleep. Amen to that. In the same way, our pain resonates in the heart of God. He always cares, and he is always close. He's not some aloof taskmaster in the sky who only cares about how much we get done or whether we've sinned today. You can read that again. (laughs) He's not some aloof taskmaker in the sky who only cares about how much we get done or whether we've sinned today. He cares about us. He understands what we're going through. He shares our emotions. The Bible frequently talks about how God hears our cries and sees our suffering. The little deaths we go through move the heart of God. We are infinitely valuable to him, so he shares our pain. Even if it's relatively small loss in the eyes of other people, maybe you were passed over for a promotion or your car was broken into or you received a rejection letter from a publisher or a family pet died. These death experiences are important to God. Before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, He first met with the dead man's sisters, Martha and Mary. They were brokenhearted, of course, even angry. You can hear it in their voices in John 11. At one point, when Jesus saw the grief of Mary and the others, he was overcome with compassion and began to weep. Do you realize how much that says about God's heart? Jesus knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, and he still wept. Their pain matters to God. He didn't ignore the loss. He validated it. He sat with them in their suffering, and he shared their tears. Why would our tears matter to God? It's simple, because we matter to God. And not just our productivity or our holiness or our generosity. In his eyes, your pain is precious. Your grief is holy. Your loss is is sacred. So when death strikes, don't be in a hurry to stifle your grief. Don't gaslight yourself into silence. Don't gloss over your loss in the name of faith or strength. Let yourself feel all the feels for as long as you need, because your death moments are precious in the sight of the Lord. Well, by God. (laughs) Oh, my word. Uh, Um, Yeah. Yeah. I... I think we could all listen to this one once or twice, you know, or two or three times or five (laughs) or six times. Um, I think it's an incredibly important one. Mm -hmm. A few highlights for me was even though that Jesus knew that God would raise Lazarus from the dead, he still shared in those emotions. And I just think that's incredibly powerful that no matter how big or how small of a thing that you're going through, God's there for you. 
and he cares about you. Like he yeah. actually cares about you. Yeah. That's probably something I struggle with a little bit is like, does God actually care about me? Like I, I know that scripture says he cares about me, but can I feel his care for me? And I think that I need to lean into him for that. Um, there's this thing I saw on social media the other day about how like perspective can kind of change your perspective on things. <laughs> yeah. So for example, if you are someone who grew up in an incredibly affluent community and you've experienced travel, like I'll put it this way. I didn't get on an airplane till I was like 21. Yeah. Micah got on an airplane, what, at like month five or six or something? Three months. Yeah, three and something like that. So, you know, Micah's life will be very different than my life. And the thing is, is a lot of us, if you come from a background where maybe you're a little bit more privileged, you can start to downplay the hardships you go through. But the thing is, is you've actually never experienced some of those deep, deep, deep hardships. Mm -hmm. And so the perspective that you're feeling is actually hard mm -hmm. because that's all you know. Yeah. And so what will happen is, is people will gaslight themselves mm -hmm. into thinking, oh, this is not that traumatic because there, these people have trouble having water or housing or and those things are real. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that your body is experiencing something incredibly difficult for you. Yeah. And so it really is important to not downplay and gaslight yourself into thinking that what you're going through isn't difficult because what you're basically telling your mind and your body is that my troubles are not worth talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not worth running to God with because they're not real troubles. Yeah. So now you're downplaying your troubles and you're, you're starting to tell yourself you're unworthy of help. Yeah. And even though you're still experiencing the hardship that you're going through, you now you're not allow, allowing help into your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do I believe that there are incredibly much more hardships than what some people go through? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change their experience. Yeah. I heard it said once that there's two people in a hotel or a hospital room and one has a broken leg and one is in a full body cast. And you could say to the person with the broken leg, like, mm -hmm. oh, well, your pain is small in comparison to what he's going through. But that doesn't mean his broken leg doesn't hurt. Like no. he's still experiencing pain. And it's the same way in our lives as individuals. Yes, someone else might be going through something much more traumatic, but it doesn't mean the thing that you are going through is not hurting you. Like it doesn't mean that you can't feel those emotions. Um, and I think it's so powerful how much God cares. I was talking to a girlfriend recently who's trying to conceive and really like trying to encourage her to, to lament to God. Like it is okay to express your disappointment to him because in my eyes, like I believe she will have multiple children that she will have a legacy in her family. And the beautiful thing is like, God knows that, like God knows her children already. Like he says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So he knows her children. Like he knew Micah before he was formed in my belly. And I remind him of that sometimes, especially when he's having a hard time. I'm like, man, buddy, I wish I could help you like in some way to like calm you down. But like what comforts me is knowing that like God loves Micah more than I even love Micah, which is like hard to fathom, but it's true. And just that knowing of like, okay, just because God knows her future children and our future children doesn't mean that the hurt of right now that she's experiencing inside of not being able to get pregnant doesn't exist and that God doesn't care for where she's at right now. And so whatever that is for you, right? Like God knows who your future spouse might be. It doesn't mean he doesn't care that you are or struggling with disappointment that that person isn't here yet. And so I just encourage you to lament to God, to be honest with God, because the thing is, is he knows, but what is intimacy? It's being able to be vulnerable and real with someone and connecting and God desires intimacy with you. Like he desires it more than you probably even desire it because he created you and he wants to experience that closeness with you. But you have an action like you have to draw close to him and he will draw near to you. But we first have to posture ourselves 
in a humility, in a reverence, in an awe, and a fear of him. And it's beautiful what we will experience when we leave it all at his throne. Yeah. Um, I was in seminary for a little while, and one of the practices that we did was we actually wrote our own laments. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage you all, honestly, it's like, it's a fun practice. Yeah. I thought mine was actually kind of nice. Yeah. Um, if you can always look up different Psalms, like Psalm 86, Psalm uh, 12, Psalm 44. I think there's a Psalm 13, maybe there's, mm -hmm. a, there's several of them where you can hear David really cry out, yeah. like cry out and maybe write your own lament. Yep. Um, that could be something to try to, that way you're honestly giving um, words to what you're experiencing yeah. and it's words towards God. And so that could be a fun little practice. I agree. Want to pray something out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you care, God, that our tears are seen by you, that our cries are heard by you, Father, that as we draw near to you, you draw near to us, Father, that you desire intimacy with us, that you desire relationship with us, that you desire to comfort us and give us peace in our trial, Father. Even if you don't calm the storm, you can calm our hearts. Only you can do that, Father. And we thank you for that. We thank you that we serve a powerful and personal God. You are Father. You are friend. You are Lord. You are our Prince of Peace. You are our Comforter. You are our God. We humbly serve you, Father. We come to you in reverence. We honor your name. And we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When I was that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And continue <laughs> pressing into God. Uh, what do I say? <laughs> don't forget, you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. And don't forget it's Chad's birthday. We'll be talking to y'all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all.